Christopher Hallett spent years helping Neely Petrie Blanchard fight for custody of her daughters. Then, on the evening of November 15, 2020, she shot him in the head in his Ocala, Florida home. While blood pooled beneath Mr. Hallett's dying body, Ms. Petrie Blanchard declared her motive. She was convinced Mr. Hallett had joined a cabal of government Satanists to steal her children. Mr. Hallett was a self-appointed expert in child custody law with no formal legal training. His theories about corruption in the legal system attracted thousands of followers on YouTube and Facebook. This is the opening line of an April 23rd, 2021 Wall Street Journal article titled, How a Custody Fight Plus QAnon Turned Deadly. But the Wall Street Journal, as you will see, left out an important ingredient in this article and in the title of the article. Yes, these individuals were QAnon involved, but they were also sovereign citizens. My friends and family, this is another example of how sovereign citizen theories, sometimes combined with other theories, can lead people down a dark and deadly path of no return. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Common Sense Academy. I'm your host, Joe Pometto, Joe the Lawyer. Here on this channel, we cover sovereign citizens, First Amendment auditors, and people behaving badly. Part of our mission is to expose these people for what they are the majority of the time, dangerous fraudsters. If you like my channel, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Also, consider buying the book I wrote on Sovereign Citizens. You can purchase a hard copy or buy it on Kindle on Amazon.com. The link is in the description below. Now, before we dig into the rest of the story, the real reason many of you are here today, you don't come for the content, you don't come for the story, you come for the same time sip. That's right, today I have uh, the nectar of the gods, a wonderful fresh cup of coffee, Raise your drink, sip with me, it tastes better when we sip together. You may be drinking beer, you may be drinking liquor, it's a, it's Christmas Eve, drink whatever the heck you want. By the way, Merry Christmas everyone, cheers. <sighs> Delicious. The two main actors in this story are Neely Petrie Blanchard and Christopher Hallett. Hallett used what he called calculus equations to prove his legal arguments and said he was helping to advise President Donald Trump on a new Justice Department. Some of Mr. Hallett's followers said in comments and on regular video calls that pedophiles in the Pentagon steal children. Some subscribe to QAnon, which claims a high-ranking whistleblower is exposing the activity. Some said the earth is flat. I would say also that these ideas are sovereign citizen motivated. Mr. Hallett's claim to be a lawyer, his fake practice of law, and his distrust of the legal system all point, point towards the ever-present influence of maritime and admiralty sailors on his thinking and on that of Petrie Blanchard. Ms. Petrie Blanchard, who's now 34 years old, posted photos online in a QAnon shirt and claimed her own custody troubles were related to dark government movings. At one point, said a person to close to her, she said Mr. Hallett might be Q, the figure whose online postings form the basis for the QAnon ideology. For years, Ms. Petrie Blanchard said Mr. Hallett had been telling her that any day now, a U.S. Marshal would bring back her oldest daughter, who is in the custody of her former boyfriend's mother, even though there were no legal proceedings that could result in such an outcome. Again, Another sovereign citizen idea, U.S. Marshals or Sheriff's deputies represent the real authority of law, not local police and courts that we are accustomed to. This shows the sovereign influence. 
Mr. Hallett, who was 50 when he died, created a life that revolved around his social media presence. One online adherent became his girlfriend. His followers provided him enough of an income through subscriptions to his videos, donations, and payments for advice that he quit his job at an auto parts store and dr dreamed one day of owning a private jet. Ms. Petrie Blanchard is currently in jail in Marion County, Florida, facing a charge of first-degree murder. In a series of interviews, she declined to discuss the circumstances of Mr. Hallett's death. That is, of course, good legal advice. Her lawyer, Jack Morrow, doesn't deny his client shot Mr. Hallett and said he intends to mount a temporary insanity defense. His client, he said, is a conspiracist who was trying to see her children, then became convinced that Mr. Hallett was part of a plot against her. That takes a woman to the point where she steps over the threshold and empties a revolver into someone, Mr. Morrow said. Ms. Petrie Blanchard said what happened with Hallett is part of a bigger story and that she knew about news events before they occurred because of her research with QAnon. I'm trying to connect the dots. I just know way too much, is what she said. Temporary insanity, everyone, is a good legal strategy here. I'm not sure it will work, simply because a majority of juries in America feel a duty to hold people responsible for their actions. But it is hard to argue that there is not something wrong here with this woman. And she needs help and serious reverse brainwashing, if you ask me. Chris Hallett grew up in Youngstown, Ohio, a rundown industrial city an hour southeast of Cleveland. He was a teenager when he saw Don Bowers crying in a corner of a local roller rink and hopped over the boards to confront her, to comfort her. I can't talk right now. By the time he was 19 and she was 17, they were married with an infant son in a home in a trailer park. We didn't have the knowledge to take care of a child, said Mrs. Bowers, who got divorced from Mr. Hallett a few years later, but remained his closest friend until his death. They gave the boy to her parents, initially for, her, for a year, but the parents won permanent custody. Mr. Hallett spent the next 17 years fighting to get his son back, at one point taking him without permission in Florida and returning him only when law enforcement came. Mr. Hallett had two more kids, another divorce, and more years of legal fights over the younger children's custody and child support. There were near constant financial problems. And by around 2010, Mr. Hallett came to believe that his own lawyer was working against him and that the family courts and attorneys were in cahoots making money off aggrieved parents. He pursued his case on his own even though he wasn't a lawyer, filing dozens of documents alleging impropriety and threatening consequences if officials failed to meet his demands. Everyone, many people turn to sovereign citizen beliefs when they feel the legal system is not responding to their needs. They feel it is unfair or that it is corrupt. The reality is sometimes the legal system is going to prejudice one party in a dispute, usually with good reason, but people on the receiving end rarely see their own role in the outcome. Rarely do they want to take responsibility. Instead, they demonize the system and the lawyers and the judges who are always an easy target. Mr. Hallett's strategy didn't work. These continuing greedy, vicious, and victive, vindictive attacks on me will not go unanswered. I am tired of being ignored, treated with ambivalence and contempt. He wrote in a federal court filing in 2016 that included an itemized invoice claiming the U.S. attorney in Tampa was 60 days overdue in paying him $33 million. The case was dismissed and no money was paid to Mr. Hallett. Mr. Hallett was evicted from a home in Florida and hit with recurring notices for back child support that landed him in jail for 30 days. The fight destroyed him, said his eldest son, Matt, who is now 31. Mr. Hallett had regretted being absent from his childhood and had promised to be present for his younger kids, but was unable to see them after the divorce. 
These federal court filings on government officials, a standard sovereign citizen tactic, paper terrorism. Ms. Petrie Blanchard's life was also becoming chaotic. Since her youth, she had been the kind of troublemaker everyone loves to be around. In seventh grade at a Tennessee boarding school, she persuaded the other girls to let boys sneak into the dorm one night. She didn't have to try. Everyone wanted to be friends with her, a childhood friend recalled. She graduated from high school in 2005, completed a medical certificate program in Jacksonville, Florida. However, her tendency for trouble became less fun. Ms. Petrie Blanchard became pregnant. The child's father was no help. And Ms. Blanchard ended up with $16,000 in student debt and difficulty keeping a job. After the mother of her estranged boyfriend alleged Ms. Petrie Blanchard and the boyfriend used drugs, she lost custody of the baby to her mother-in-law. She was wrongly taken from me, Ms. Petrie Blanchard said. She was ripped from my arms. The grandmother who holds custody of the child declined to comment. Again, we see someone who feels slighted, discarded, and damaged by the legal system. In my line of work as an attorney, everyone, even people who don't turn to sovereign citizen ideology, feel that the courts are corrupt and working against them. I'm not saying that that isn't sometimes true. Most of the time it's not. The problem is one party is going to lose. The courts have to make decisions. The child's father, who isn't involved in raising her, couldn't be reached. Miss Petrie Blanchard became obsessed with regaining custody, said her mother, Susan Blanchard. In 2013, Miss Petrie Blanchard kidnapped her daughter, then four, from school when she believed she wasn't getting the visitation she deserved. That earned her nearly a year in jail. That's when all hell broke loose because my life changed forever, Ms. Petrie Blanchard said in an interview. She had two more daughters, twins, before the kidnapping in 2013 who started living with her mother as she fought the charges. The father of the twins wasn't involved in raising them. Ms. Petrie Blanchard's husband, Robert Petrie, who is not the girl's father, declined to comment. When Petrie Blanchard got out of jail, a court order denying her access to her elder daughter drove her toward a collection of people who identify as the parental rights movement, estranged parents who told her it wasn't her fault, it was the system. One thing about sovereign citizen ideology is it offers people a feeling of hope, a false hope, but it is hope nonetheless. And the feeling of hopelessness in the face of all else can drive people towards these fringe theories. Frustrated that attorneys weren't arranging for access to her daughter, Petrie Blanchard began spending hours each day on Facebook researching theories about why the government separates children from their parents. Some of the people she met online introduced her to Q, and she, began, began, she came to believe her children were threatened by a sinister plot. Spending as many as 15 hours a day researching online, she found Christopher Hallett on Facebook in 2017. He told her he had been making headway in his own child custody fight, which had been going on for eight years, and he could get her older daughter back. He started making online videos discussing his legal work, including his efforts for Petrie Blanchard. I kind of took her under my wing, Mr. Hallett said. While he called Ms. Petrie Blanchard a client, he said, I always say it's more of a father-daughter thing. At times, Petrie Blanchard tried to quit using Facebook and quit socializing with Hallett and his followers, her mother said, but she always found her way back. They offered her validation that she wasn't a bad parent at a time when she felt ashamed about losing her daughter. When you tell somebody you lost custody of your child, they immediately say, what is wrong with you, Ms. Bl Ms. Blanchard said. I don't deny that what she says is true. Hope and validation is an alluring combination. One interesting theme in this story, though, from my personal perspective, is the breakdown of the nuclear family. These issues, in my opinion, were not as prevalent in the past, in my humble opinion, because broken families were not as prevalent. But I digress. Back to our story. 
Mr. Hallett, who was once a Democrat, told his followers that Donald Trump would bring justice to aggrieved parents. Hallett felt a kinship with Mr. Trump as someone pushing back against the establishment he saw as corrupt. Hallett developed a theory that judges and lawyers were violating the U.S. Constitution's Emoluments Clause, which governed how the president, members of Congress, and other office holders are paid, and they were illegally enriching themselves. Mr. Hallett told his son and ex-wife that some of his followers' beliefs were ridiculous. He was angry at a legal system that he claimed victimized working-class people like him, he told them, but he was no conspiracy theorist. Newsflash. He was a conspiracy theorist, a creative one too. With the encouragement of Ms. Bowers, Mr. Hallett turned his recreational legal work into a business calling it e -Clause. Remember, Bowers is his girlfriend that he met through this business. e -Clause stands for the Emoluments Clause. Clients hired him to help them gain custody of their children. He named Petrie Blanchard an agent of e -Clause and gave her business cards and responsibility for finding clients and managing his e clauses social media. He spoke for hours on social media several times a week. Mr. Hallett said his followers could use his theories to win legal disputes. Follower counts ballooned. It just started to explode out of nowhere, Mr. Bowers recalled him saying, Ms. Bowers. And this is where the sovereign citizen gets addicted, everyone, when he starts to profit from his schemes. Mr. Hallett and his business partners use Patreon, PayPal, Cash App to sell subscriptions for his videos, solicit donations, and sell mugs, shirts, and stretch pants with slogans such as, Public servant, what flavor of BS are you serving up this week? Mr. Hallett laid out his arguments using what he... What he said was calculus and geometry. To his followers, they illustrated how lawyers and politicians were profiting from corruption and how children were being wrongfully removed from their parents. Some of his followers had limited understanding of the legal system and bad experiences themselves. Many were desperate to find ways to reunite with their children. On social media, many followers treated Hallett as someone who could finally give answers and the group as people on their side. One person posted on Facebook that she appreciated the positive feedback and that Mr. Hallett would heart every comment she left. He had the answer and he knew it. Others said he gave them hope. Hallett even paid a fee to join the American Bar Association and in court filings included his membership number implying he was a lawyer. In 2018, a judge disqualified him from a case because he didn't have the proper credentials. I must say, this is the first time I've seen a sovereign citizen pull such a sleight of hand. Not their first sleight of hand, but this particular one, honorary membership of the ABA, very good and deceptive way to con convince people you are a lawyer. Crystal Malmstrom, who he helped in a custody case, ended up in jail for contempt of court after following his advice. Thanks to Chris, I spent five days in jail, she said. Mr. Hallett and Ms. Petrie Blanchard spoke frequently. When she referred to her belief the government was trying to steal children, Hallett didn't try to dissuade her. He told her he could get them back. He wanted to help me, Ms. Petrie Blanchard said. In 2018, Petrie Blanchard began appearing on weekly video calls Mr. Hallett organized for his followers. She brought enthusiasm, charisma, and a female voice to the group. Soon, more than 50 people a day were messaging e -clause on Facebook, requesting Mr. Hallett's help on their cases. He was making between $1,200 and $1,500 a month. And let me tell you, as a part-time YouTuber, that's a pretty good chunk of change. <laughs> Ms. Petrie Blanchard's mother, Ms. Blanchard, said she had been trying to assess her daughter's state, hoping to possibly return the younger children to her. Then, after a scheduled visit to her mother's house in Kentucky in March 2020, Petrie Blanchard kidnapped the twins, then age seven. Police issued an Amber Alert for a Ford Escape with E-Clause plates. Man, these license plates, I'm telling you. 
Petrie Blanchard later said she decided to take the girls on the advice of E-Claw's members and brought them to stay with a friend from the group in Kentucky. Ms. Petrie Blanchard was arrested and she was bailed out by a man who sometimes worked with Mr. Hallett. She spent the summer working on her case and promoting QAnon and other conspiracies online. The November election created a new upheaval in Ms. Petrie Blanchard's world. Members of the group were convinced the election had been stolen. A nice blend of QAnon and sovereign citizenship is seen here. The E-Clause license plates are right out of the sovereign citizen handbook. Ms. Petrie Blanchard went to Mr. Hallett's Florida home to work on her lawsuits. She had grown frustrated and increasingly paranoid about people conspiring to take her children. As Mr. Hallett kept losing cases, he made bigger promises to Petrie. Hallett said he'd managed to get Trump involved in her case of her older daughter. She said Mr. Hallett told her Mr. Trump had asked him to form a new Justice Department and that she could be a part of it. Mr. Trump's office of the former president didn't respond to requests for comments. That's because there's no possible way this is true. Dissatisfaction with Mr. Hallett among e Clause members was growing. His repeated failure in court and rumors spread by disgruntled former allies were fostering a new suspicion, according to Ms. Malmstrom, a former, the former client, and another person who is close to Ms. Petrie Blanchard. Some of his followers started believing Hallett was actually on the payroll of Child Protection Services. Petrie Blanchard became, came to believe it was true, a person close to her said. When you have fully accepted one crazy theory of reality, suddenly every conspiracy theory can seem real. In my own job, I've encountered people with schizophrenia. This reminds me of schizophrenics who see danger around every other corner and are quick to turn on people that they once trusted. After two late nights of work at Mr. Hallett's home, Ms. Petrie Blanchard asked him to make her a cup of coffee. He walked into the kitchen and when he reached into the cabinet, Petrie Blanchard pulled out a gun fired into his shoulder blade and declared he was part of the government conspiracy to steal her children, according to police records. Then she shot him in the head. He died before the ambulance arrived. The account was given to police by Mr. Hallett's girlfriend and her daughter, who were in the house at the time. By one account that I read, Mr. Hallett's girlfriend and her daughter actually witnessed Petrie Blanchard shoot Mr. Hallett. What a tragic and unfortunate story this becomes. Petrie Blanchard fled the scene. She called her mother to say she wanted to turn herself in, but she feared authorities in Florida who, believe, who she believed had connections to Hallett's family. Police arrested her the next day in Georgia. Hallett's son and Ms. Bowers rushed to Florida as soon as they got word of the shooting. Ms. Bowers said they arrived at the house days later to find Petrie Blanchard's legal filings on Hallett's computer screen and his girlfriend's teenage daughter scrubbing his dried blood off the kitchen floor. Since Mr. Hallett's death, his followers have come up with a new belief. One of them recently texted Mr. Ballard, Bowers, Ms. Bowers, Chris faked his death. As far as my own online research has shown, Ms. Blanchard is still awaiting trial in a Florida prison at this time. This story highlights how deadly fake theories of reality can be. Much of this article focuses on QAnon and it certainly plays its role, but I believe it's worth mentioning. The ideas in this tragedy are at that, their core, I believe, that of sovereign citizens. Fake lawyers, fake license plates, fake legal theories. Sovereign citizen beliefs are dangerous and it can lead people down a rabbit hole that is unfortunately deadly. Thank you everyone for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Consider buying my book where I deconstruct the sovereign citizen movement available on Amazon through the link in the description below. Thank you.